Now my name is Jovana Gerbic and I am a creative writer and a recovering PhD scientist. Um, now of course I, I kid about this, but in fact I did transition from a career as a research scientist in chemistry and <laughs> functional genomics uh, to one in which I work with various uh, entertainment, media, and even technology companies in order to sort of bring their science to life and to tell stories about them. And when I tell people about this particular career transition, they sort of look at me sometimes with confusion or shock, uh, as if my career GPS surely gave me a uh, wrong turn somewhere in there. But the truth of the matter is that the more that I work as a conduit between the artistic world and the scientific world, the more I realize that they actually share many important traits. Um, and some of those are that they are creative, that they're very passionate about solving problems and conveying them, uh, that they think outside the box. And most importantly of all, they have a tremendous, tremendous degree of impact on society at large. And it's this particular shared synergy that we really want to explore and strengthen and, and form bonds with as we work towards building a better tomorrow. Now, there's actually a very long-standing history of mutual inspiration between the scientific worlds and entertainment when it comes to innovation and problem solving. And so many of these gadgets that we consider uh, indispensable to our lives today, things like our uh, iPads and iPods and iPhones, and pretty soon we'll be wearing them as watches, were actually uh, before you engineers made them, they were actually coming to life on the screen uh, uh, by people's imaginations. And the more that scientists made these things possible, the more that entertainment uh, pushed the envelope in terms of what was possible. Take, for example, Jurassic Park, uh, which was written as a book in 1990 and appeared as a movie in 1993. But and explored these sort of ethical and technological boundaries of embryonic cloning. But Dolly the Sheep wasn't actually cloned uh, until 1996. And we have some of these other really wonderful things from pop culture that scientists have taken upon themselves to make uh, technologically. Now, and this is why I chose to write books about this and certainly get involved in um, the entertainment and media aspect of it. But I, I know what you're, you're thinking. Okay, so there's this mutual relationship now of influence between science and entertainment in terms of building these things to life. But is there an actual empirical measurable influence by entertainment to the population at large when it comes to matters of science and technology? And the answer to that question Yes, it does carry influence, and it's very surprisingly large. So let's take a look at some of the phenomena uh, culturally, pop culture-wise, that um, have uh, really captured our imaginations of late. You take the show Breaking Bad, which uh, just ended and people have absolutely adored, and it has, in fact, uh, inspired a lot of people uh, to study chemistry. Um, hopefully not to make meth, though. Um, <laughs> there has been a, a recent boom uh, in the United Kingdom of undergraduate students uh, wanting to study physics. And they've actually measured this percentage-wise. There's been a consistent increase in students wanting to measure physics because uh, the Big Bang Theory made it cool. You take a look at the CSI franchise of forensic shows and a graph of how many undergraduate degrees in forensics-based sciences um, have been pursued. And since CSI's premiere in 2000, the growth has been remarkable. And uh, even recently, uh, Columbia engineer Mike Massimino, he's a NASA astronaut that uh, has done a, a lot of really interesting work on the space shuttles. He actually gave one of these TED Talks here at Columbia a couple years ago. And he was telling a bunch of us in Los Angeles that he hopes that the hit movie Gravity, which he helped to work on, that he hopes that it's more than just a movie. 
but rather that it conveys to people what it is that engineers and astronauts at NASA do and to inspire funding for that work and, of course, the next generation of engineers. But even more so than carrying influence, entertainment impacts lives. So this is now more than just an issue of inspiring people to sort of go study science or um, to really appreciate it. We take a look at some of the healthcare shows and medical shows that we watch, and they have actually had a tremendous impact um, in, first of all, how medicine uh, is impacted, and also how we personally, the kind of care that we look at and how we interact with our doctors. So there was actually, this extends to medical students themselves. There was a very interesting study recently uh, in a medical journal, and there was this phenomenon happening at medical schools all over the country, which is that medical students were doing their intubations wrong, despite what their professors had taught them. And when they kind of delved deeper into this problem, what was actually happening is that medical students were wanting to do intubations like what they had seen on medical shows on TV, not how their professors taught them. So it even extends to us, the power of entertainment. Um, another really interesting experiment um, socially that was done by embedding a health message uh, in an episode of television. And the message was, is it, does a woman who has HIV, is she destined to pass it on to her baby? Now, of course, we know that the answer to that question is false. And so a group of lay people were asked before viewing the episode, and only half of them gave the right answer. One week after seeing the show, um, actually, that number grew to 76%. And even six weeks after seeing the episode, there was a retention, a higher retention of information. And so people respond to the entertainment industry. They're impacted by it. They're absolutely influenced by it. And it really relates to the scientific content that it's conveying to their lives. Now, then of course we have the media, which is another layer of complication. Not bad, not good, just complication, particularly, of course, the internet. A science article from Science Magazine uh, uh, from January of 2013, and it tells us the shocking fact that nine out of 10 people use Google to find information. Um, but what's actually uh, more shocking is that 60% of the US public that utilizes these search engines in order to find their information that is their primary source of scientific information, okay? So the internet's growing, media's growing, uh, entertainment messages are clearly being absorbed. And so the mainstream media, this can be both good and bad. When it's good, as in some of the examples that I've shown you, it can be tremendously impactful. And when it's not used properly, um, it can actually cause a lot of damage, such as uh, the recent um, uh, brouhaha over the link between autism and vaccines, which was perpetuated within the media falsely uh, for a very, very long time, well after it was scientifically proven um, to not be true. So, for example, I have this graph here um, from October of 2013 by the watchdog group Media Matters. And let's take the case of climate change. Now, among uh, the climate scientist community, over a three-month period, only 3% of all messages contain any kind of doubt or skepticism over whether climate change is a scientific fact and whether it's actually happening. But when you look at print media over the last three months, you had 28% of all information containing some sort of skepticism or neutrality about the science of the matter. You also have certain issues sometimes with sensationalism of uh, scientific studies to make for like a more exciting headline. Um, and CNN got into a little bit of trouble last year doing this. And so why do all of these things go hand in hand? You know, why, why do they matter and why are we talking about them now? And the answer to that question is that your generation of engineers, you guys that are sitting in this auditorium right now, and the, and the generations after you are going to be responsible for solving some of the most challenging and important problems that 
perhaps humanity has ever faced in today's world. We've got things like climate change, uh, the availability of clean water, um, sustainable food for a growing population. Certainly global health goes hand in hand. And of course, you know, as engineers, you should be very excited about the renewable resources um, and technology that will make all of these things possible. But it's not enough anymore that we just work inside of a laboratory in a vacuum and that we make these things come about. The truth of the matter is that as I've shown you, there is a tremendous impact between the relationship of the public, us in science, and media and entertainment. They influence one another. They push one another. And that relationship is one that is very synergistic and that really fuels these ideas that come together for a better tomorrow. So it's my sincere hope that some of you who are studying engineering or have studied it actually choose to veer beyond the scientific world into perhaps media or entertainment or communicating what it is that we do in a clearer and more efficient way. Because as you can see, there's a tremendous relationship between all three of these things that have an enormous impact in the problems that we're trying to solve. Thank you very much.